Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going to create our first app using Flogo. I will show you how easy it is to create a REST API with Flogo. In this little tutorial, we'll build a simple flight booking app that requires a name entry to return the respective booking. To simplify our scenario, only one customer, a Mr. Jones, has booked a flight in business class. All the other customers are flying in economy class. Let's start developing the app. Open the Apps tab in Flogo Enterprise. Click Create Import App. By default, a new app will get a generated name. We'll change this by clicking into the name and edit it to say Flight App. In this tutorial, we'll use a simple JSON schema for the REST response that the service sends back. The following is the structure of our JSON schema used in this tutorial. Copy the JSON sample to use in your app. Click on Schemas. The Empty Schemas dialog box opens. Click on plus schema to add a new JSON schema. Add the name flight response and paste in the schema. Click save. Every app must have at least one flow to contain the activities that create the business logic for our application. We'll create a new flow attached to a REST trigger. Click create. Make sure the flow option is selected and add a name. Click create. Now we have an empty flow, so we'll start by adding a trigger. Click the HTTP receive message, and now let's configure the trigger. Select get as the method, and enter slash flight bookings in the resource path. Click on the toggle button to show the app level schema we defined earlier. Select the schema. Click copy schema. This will configure the inputs and the outputs of the flow to match the inputs and outputs from the trigger. Click on the trigger. This will open the trigger editor. Here we need to map the inputs and outputs from the flow. First we need to add the query parameter. Go to output settings and under query parameters click on add row. Fill in the parameter name with the word last name. Click on save. Go to map to flow inputs. At the moment our new query parameter isn't visible. Click on Save and then Sync to get the new values displayed. In the Flow Input list, click on Headers. In Trigger Output, find the Headers value. Under Trigger Outputs, navigate to Headers and click on Headers to fill in the value. Now navigate back to the Flow Input and click on Query Parameters. Again, let's map the Trigger Output Query Parameters to this value. Go to Map from Flow Outputs and follow the same process under Trigger Reply, select each of the values and map the corresponding flow output value. Click Save and then close the dialog box. We're now presented with an empty flow. Our first task is to output a message to the log. To do this, we need to add and configure a logger activity. Move the cursor to the first plus point and click to open up the Add Activity dialog. Enter the word Log and select the General tab, then select the Log Message Activity. Go to Input, and under Input, select Message. To format our log message, we're going to use a string function called String Concat. We can find this in the function list under String. Select this, and it will give us a pre-filled in message. STR1 and STR2 need to be updated. For STR1, we'll put in a string, And for SDR2, we'll put in the value from the query parameter. Click Save. In our business logic, we need to test the entered last name to determine the processing path. To do this, we need to add two branches. To add the first branch, move the cursor to the log activity. Three small icons will appear. The first one is Add a Branch. Click this to add the first branch. Now we need to set the condition to be tested. Move the cursor down so the three dots appear. Click on this and then click on the gear icon. This will open the branch mapping settings. Here select success with condition. We can now define a condition. Click on condition. Our condition has to evaluate to true or false. We are going to select a function called string contains, which returns a Boolean value. Set our first string to the query parameter last name. For the second parameter, specify our name of Jones. 
Click Save. If our branch evaluates to true, we are going to use a return activity to return a set of values back to the caller. Set the code to 200 and then set each of the individual fields to an appropriate value. Setting class, because this is Jones, to business and an appropriate value for cost and departure dates and our destinations. Enter a first name and put in random value for ID. Click on save to save this. Now we're going to add our second branch. Go back to the log message, click on the branch icon to add the second branch. Again, open the branch mapping settings and this time we're going to use success with no matching condition. What this means is if the first condition is not true, we will always go down this branch. Click on save. Our second branch is very similar to the first, just the return values have changed. To speed up the process, let's copy the first return and amend the values. Use the copy icon to create a duplicate. Now drag this to the second branch. We will now need to edit some of the return values. Change class to economy. Adjust the return to cost. Change the departure and destinations. Change the first name and click Save. We've now completed our flow. Before building the application, we will validate and test the application. Clicking Validate will check that all the required values are set and syntactically correct. And now let's test it. So click Test to bring up the launch configuration. As this is the first time we've tested this, we need to create a launch configuration. Click on Create a launch configuration. This will create a configuration based on the flow inputs. Under the mapping settings, navigate to our input value, last name, and let's fill in the value. Let's use the value Smith so that we, we will test the second branch. Click Next, click Run. This will launch the tester and start processing with the input values we've just specified. You'll see the blue line that indicates the path we've gone through this flow. Click on Log Message and view the input parameters for this activity. Click on return to see the format of the inputs to the activity. If we click on new test, we can retry with a different configuration that will test the first branch. Fill in the value of Jones to ensure that both paths are taken when the flow runs. Now that we've completed our flow, let's look at three ways that we can test this. Firstly, we're going to build for Linux. Click Build and then select Linux AMD64. This will build an executable that we can run. Once it's built, let's open up the Windows Subsystem for Linux window to run the application. Running the application will output information to the log. Note the port, the method and the path that is being exposed by this application. We're going to use Postman to test this. In Postman, let's add a new activity and fill in here the URL of our exposed service. In this case, it's on localhost. Add our query parameter. And make sure we're using the correct port of 9999. Click on send and we will get a response. Our inputted last name was Smith and our response should show Smith as the last name. Change this to Jones and click Send again. Looking in the application log, you will see there is two invocations and you'll see the output from our log message that we created as part of the application. Let's terminate this and go back to Build for Windows. Bring up a Windows command prompt. and run the Windows version of our application. You will note that the messages should be identical. Back in Postman, let's rerun the tests, first with a different name, and then with Jones again. 
Note the output in the logs should show two invocations. Now we're going to run under Docker. Let's build for Docker. Building for Docker will automatically put the Docker image into your local repository. In the Windows Docker desktop, we can see that it has created the Flogo flight app image. From Docker desktop, we can run this. Let's fill in an alternative port for the HTTP port. Let's choose 9988 and run the container. Once the container is running, we can go back to Postman to test it. First, change the port number and click Send. Test for the different value. And once again, note that the activity works exactly the same way, regardless of its platform. Thanks for watching this video. If you need any help with using Flogo, check out our other videos. I hope you like this new version of Flogo. Let us know in the comments what you think about it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more Flogo-ready content and receive more Tibco updates. Thank you.